One day we are all going to die. And I don't know about you, but I find that a little bit weird. I won't exist. You won't exist. In fact, if we use Janine Kalman as a measuring stick, considering she's the oldest person to have ever lived, then in the maximum of 122 years, no one currently alive right now will exist on this dimensional plane that we call Earth. It's the one thing that we share in common across all cultures, all faiths, and even species. Except for that weird jellyfish that can turn back time and live forever. Leaving the rest of us stuck here with the same old doom of the finality of life. While that jellyfish is chilling out on a tropical beach, sipping margaritas from a seashell for eternity without a care in the world. I know. I hate that jellyfish too. But there is hope. There is one genius man who truly believes that we will all live forever. And I've read three of his books and researched every single thing I can possibly find out about him to see what's going on. You do know you're so lucky I do the hard work for you. In this video, we're going to dive into his ideas on the singularity, take a look at the possibility of digital immortality, and think about whether living forever would even be a good thing. But first, who is this man? Well, his name is Ray Kurzweil. Is he just some crackpot like this guy? On behalf of the Honorable Corton representative. Or do his predictions legit carry any merit? So I first came across this man in a Lex Friedman podcast and he made my head explode. Obviously, I'm incredibly skeptical of anyone telling us we can live forever, especially when there's money involved in the form of his Live Forever company, Ray and Terry's longevity products, all of his books, and he's no doubt paid speaking gigs. But I've got to admit, after looking into his work, I started to like the man. I became fascinated with the things that he's already achieved. And he's starting to win me over. Bill Gates said of him, and I quote, Ray Kurzweil is the best person I know at predicting the future of artificial intelligence. I'll tell you about some of the crazy predictions he's made and continues to make in a second. But first, let's talk about the things he's already done for the world. You see, Ray built his first computer when he was just seven. 17 years old and since then he's invented many amazing things just to name a few and i do mean a few he created optical character recognition technology which enabled documents and books to be digitized properly yep if you've ever read a book online that's pretty much right he basically created digital music with his music synthesizers the first devices ever with the ability to create acoustic sounds which funnily enough i actually owned one at one point without having a who he was. As you can imagine, this invention got him pretty friendly with Stevie Wonder and I imagine many other famous musicians. And he changed the lives of millions with the Kurzweil reading machine. The first machine capable of reading printed documents out aloud so that the blind and visually impaired could be more independent and have access to the information that the rest of us do. So the guys invented a lot of stuff. Now, let's get on to some of his crazy predictions. Obviously, Bill Gates doesn't just go around handing out compliments for free. So there's definitely something there. Out of the 147 predictions that Ray has made since the 1990s, 115 of them have turned out to be completely correct, and another 12 have turned out to be essentially correct. And again, just to name a few, and again, I really do just mean a few, he predicted the internet smartphones in everyone's hands, and AI-powered assistants like Siri and Google. Those are some insane predictions. He's been right about 86% of the time. And I don't know about you, but I'm lucky if I can accurately predict what I'm gonna have for dinner most nights. So I'd say he's doing a pretty good job. So that's Ray, in a nutshell. He's a genius, to say the least. So what does all of this mean for immortality? Has he cracked it? Has he cracked mankind's biggest problem? Problem. Well, obviously not yet. But as we've said, his predictions are so accurate, it actually hurts your brain. And he well and truly completely believes in this next one. He talks about it as if it's an absolute fact. It may as well have already happened in his mind. So what is this crazy prediction? He's predicted that we will reach the singularity by the year 2045. So what is the singularity? Well, it's been described in many different ways, but to use Ray's own explanation, it's a future period where the rate of technological change will be so rapid, its impact so deep, that human life will be irreversibly transformed. And so what does that even mean? As no one actually knows what it is yet, 
yet, I find the best way to imagine the singularity is as a roller coaster. Right now, we're slowly climbing up the track, with each technological advancement acting like a click on the way up. The singularity is the moment when we reach the top of the highest peak. And then at that point, just like the sudden and exhilarating rush down of a roller coaster, technological growth will accelerate at an unimaginable speed. We quite literally do not know what will happen. So what does the singularity have to do with immortality? Well, again, this is where Ray's predictions come into play. So imagine for a second a world where aging is like an old worn out coat that you can simply take off and leave behind. In Ray's prediction of immortality, it's as if we all have an infinite wardrobe full of new coats, each one better than the last. Coats that repair themselves, adapt to the weather and never wear out. To win this metaphor, for obviously our coats represent our bodies and the infinite wardrobe represents the advancements in technology and medicine and as we approach the singularity the wardrobe just becomes more incredible. Ray predicts that with the help of biotechnology, AI and nanotechnology we'll be able to update our bodies much like we do with software now. Diseases, aging and even physical limitations could become a thing of the past. We could download enhancements for our body as easy easily as we download apps for our phone today. As far as I can tell, he's basically predicting the matrix. But instead of the machines going evil and Neo dying at the end, you live forever. You wanna learn Kung Fu? No problem, upload it. You wanna look like Brad Pitt? No problem, go and buy his skin. Just like you would in a Call of Duty game. His skin's gonna cost a fortune though, bear that in mind. You wanna become like Homelander from the boys and laser people's faces off? No problem, here's some dummies, here's his super suit. Go and knock your sadistic hat. You see, for Ray, it's not just about living longer, it's about living better. In Ray's vision of immortality, the singularity isn't just a peak in a roller coaster. It's a gateway to a world where we redefine what it means to be human. And according to Ray, we are only 25 years away from it. Now, obviously, it sounds absolutely mental, but does that just mean that we should just disregard it? Should we just ignore it? Is it all complete and utter nonsense? The guy's been right 86% of the time. You can't just ignore someone with those levels of predictive power as much as you may want to. Honestly, even hearing about all the things he's had to say made me feel really weird. Like, what would I be doing if I was going to live forever? Do I even want to? If this insanity actually happens, am I happy about it? I mean, I don't want to die, but the thing I'm scared of more than anything is watching more of my loved ones die. Myself, I can just about deal with it. But being here, I'm to watch them go that I cannot bear. But then what would we lose in this digital world of madness? Well, this brings me on to my final point. For argument's sake, let's say that Ray is right. He's spot on. He's cracked it. Would this be a utopia or a dystopian hell? Ray himself has expressed concerns about AI. He's fully aware that there's a chance we could lose control of it, leading to scenarios that could be devastating to us as a species. The fact that he even voices these concerns, in my mind at least anyway, Anyway, lends a little more credibility to his predictions. If he were just a madman, he wouldn't even think about the other side of the coin, would he? So let's imagine two cities. In the first, our utopian city, which I'm going to call Elysium Heights, AI and humans coexist harmoniously. AI enhances our lives. It cures diseases. It ends poverty. It reverses environmental damage. And we live forever in some beautiful world, free of injustice, suffering, and pain. It's a world where technology saves humanity, leading to an era of unprecedented peace and prosperity. And now contrast this with our second city, our dystopia, which I'm going to call Grimstone Metropolis. Here, AI has gone full Terminator on us, full Matrix. In this world, machines dictate the terms. They run the show. We do what they tell us. They are the law. And that's if they let us do anything at all. Maybe if we're lucky we just become their pets. It's a cold, calculated world where efficiency trumps empathy. Basically, we'd be f***ed. 
This is why it's so, so important that the world needs to discuss implications at things like the AI Safety Summit. And people like you and me learn as much as we can about this technology to ensure that it doesn't happen. So as we stand on the brink of this roller coaster ride, peering into the future, we're left with a choice. Do we embrace this technology with the hope of creating a utopia? Or do we tread cautiously, mindful of the dystopian risks? Now, all of this obviously seems like complete and utter madness. And don't worry, I've not lost my mind. I'm not just convinced that this will happen. I honestly don't know. How could I? I am learning everything I possibly can about it, though, to give myself the best chance at predicting it correctly so I can make the most accurate content I can for you and for myself. But to go back to the question of will this happen? Well, if you think of things that have happened in the past, history is full of examples of impossible things becoming possible and of massive changes that have reshaped our world in once unimaginable ways. Just consider the impact of the internet. Only a few decades ago, the idea of a global network connecting billions of people was unthinkable. Me talking to you through this screen was fairy tale nonsense. Yet today, it's an integral part of our daily lives. It's revolutionized communication, making it instant and borderless. It's transformed commerce with online shopping and digital transactions. It's reshaped politics, with social media influencing elections and public opinion, the internet has even changed the way we form relationships and communities, allowing us to transcend physical boundaries. And we've also got the Industrial Revolution, the fall of the Berlin Wall, World War II, discovering penicillin, the moon landing, the end of apartheid, the digital revolution, the human genome project, and the list just goes on and on. These historical changes are an intense reminder of that which seems inconceivable today might become the norm tomorrow. So when we consider Ray Kurzweil's predictions about the singularity and immortality, it's worth remembering our history of turning the impossible into the possible. Are you a believer? Am I a believer? Well, I've always believed that anything is possible and I do mean anything. But I'm going to have to see a bit more than what we've got now before I imagine Imagine us all living forever in a virtual world. It certainly got me thinking though. And to quote the legendary Steve Jobs, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. So as we dream of immortality, ask yourself, are you one of the crazy ones? Right, now there's a lot more to this story than I can fit into one video. So if you enjoyed it, let me know because I'm thinking about making it into a series, along with my other videos, focusing on the actual breakthroughs that are happening now in the world of human longevity and potentially even immortality. Because we have already done a lot more than you probably know, regardless of the singularity prediction. So it's obviously great theorizing about the fact that you could live forever. But what about now? Currently, we don't live forever. But we cannot deny the rapid technological changes happening around us. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't mind knowing what the best use of my time is. And to me, that's learning about AI and getting my computer science degree done so I can understand these things better. Unfortunately for you, I've been heavily researching every new AI development that I can, so you don't have to. Which is why you should watch this video next about the sheer power power that Google is promising us with its Gemini Ultra AI. Now, what was I saying about that jellyfish? Yeah, I hate that little <laughs> Looks like the tide might be turning now though, eh, Mr. Jellyfish mother <laughs> Thanks for watching, peace, and Merry Christmas.